Good morning. I'd like to thank you all for being here with me uh, this morning. Uh, sorry it's been a little while since I've uh, put up a new message. We've had some really, really bad weather here in Texas, and uh, we've had some flooding, and actually the, the room that I normally uh, stand behind my uh, little podium and, and uh, these things get recorded, I, uh, it kind of got flooded, so I'm trying to improvise here. Uh, sorry about the background, and, and, and here again, I'm not used to giving any message sitting down, but that's what's going to transpire uh, today. Uh, I'd like to thank you all so much for your thoughts, prayers, and concerns uh, during this time that uh, Texas has been having. Uh, we've been very blessed uh, versus a lot of people who have not been quite as lucky. Uh, if any of you have watched on the news or watched a lot of the Facebook postings, it's been really bad. In the uh, 27 years we've lived here, I've never, I've never seen it this bad. We uh, Saturday night and Friday night, uh, we were literally about an inch away from having to be rescued ourselves. My son, who lives on our property in a, in a trailer, uh, waited over here a little bit above his knees bringing the kids over in case the trailer flooded over there and uh, again God spared us right when we thought we were gonna have to call the rain let up and immediately the water uh, started receding so we we're quite thankful and praise the Lord for that uh, with that uh, I want to get started on uh, today's message I was uh, sitting at the computer the other morning and uh, looking over a lot of this mess that we've had from these storms in our area and, and everything that ex we've experienced over the last couple of weeks uh, and in the background someone's, someone was watching the Mari show and I couldn't help but over here the topic of the show was trust issues between couples. I know Ma Mari does a lot of the DNA, the baby's father and all that and, and that in itself is a, a, a whole nother ordeal that I could give messages on but uh, first off anyone that would air their problems on national TV have other issues but that in itself is for another day. Anyway when I heard this I felt God put upon me to to take a look at Solomon and uh, speak a few words about what trust in a relationship is. Now if you're married uh, these are some things we can look at immediately. If you're engaged in living for the Lord and, and abiding in His will, which means you're not committing sexual sin, then we can work on these things. If you've chosen to live together and have premarital relations, then already you are going against the Bible and your relationship will not be blessed and, and, and you have to understand that God gives us a permissive will along with his perfect will for us and and he'll let us live in that permissive will but we won't receive near the blessings as if we're living in his perfect will that he wants for us and uh, and until you start to do this nothing's going to be right that you do in your relationship you understand what I'm saying? Although he's going to allow, he, for many years he allowed me to do the life that I chose, but it wasn't until I fully gave myself to him and did what he wanted me to do that I've started receiving all these rich blessings within myself and my family. Now, it, it doesn't matter if you like what I just said or not, but it's a biblical truth. And I choose to believe the Bible. And you all know this from my other messages. The Bible is literal. I believe it 100%. It's infallible. But anyway, people were on this show talking and looking at each other's phones, checking each other's history on the computer or social media sites, just looking for something. See, these things are trust issues. And I promise you, if you have to do this, then your relationship is not... God-centered. And a God-centered relationship will never be blessed to its fullest. And most important, even though it's allowed, it will never be approved by God. Now with all that said, 
Let's take a look at our scripture today. So if you would, turn to Solomon chapter 2. Uh, some Bibles have a song of songs, but it's the book of Solomon. But it's uh, chapter 2, verses 8 through 17. Okay? Now normally, and you know how I'm quite a, a King James, New King James Version type guy. But what I want to read out of today uh, is an expandable Bible, which in, in my, in my uh, studies and research, I use several different versions of the Bible as long as I relate it back to what the King James Version says. But in this instance uh, today, I'm going to read out of what's known as the expandable Bible, and it will make it a little more uh, understanding for which way I want to take it today. So again, if you would, uh, look in your Bibles, uh, Solomon chapter 2, and let's start with uh, verse 8. I hear my lover's voice, the sound of my lover. Here, here he comes, jumping, leaping, across the mountains, skipping, bounding over the hills. He moves with agile grace and speed. My lover is like a gazelle or a young deer, a stag. Look, he stands behind our wall peeking, staring through the windows, looking through the blinds. My lover spoke and said to me, Get up, my darling. Let's go away, my beautiful one. Look, the winter is past. The rains are over and gone. Spring has arrived, the time of love. Blossoms appear through all the land. The time has come to sing. The cooling of doves is heard in our land. There are young figs on the fig trees and blossoms on the vines, and they smell sweet and they spread their fragrance. Get up, my darling. Let's go away, my beautiful one. My beloved is like a dove hiding in the cracks or the crevices of the rock, in the secret, hiding places of the cliff. Show me your face and let me hear your voice. Your voice is sweet, agreeable, and your face is lovely, pleasant. Catch the foxes for us, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards while they are in blossom, in other words, threats to a relationship. My lover is mine, and I am his. He feeds among the lilies until the days dawn, and the shadows disappear. Turn, my lover, be like a gazelle or a young deer on the mountains or valleys. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Okay, there's, uh, there's two meanings, uh, two, two uh, interpretations. Uh, one is referring to how Jesus will be towards us and Jerusalem in the second coming, and the other is Solomon and his to-be wife. Okay, now the latter is the one I want to use today to, to, to be more understanding of human relationships and how they should be. You see, Solomon lived in the 10th century. He was the richest king in Israel's history. He's out looking over his vineyards when he, when he meets a country girl, uh, a Shulamite. Uh, she captures the king's heart. And for some time, just like any couple, the king pursues her, and he makes periodic, periodic visits to see her. Solomon soon asks her to marry him. You know, she gives him serious consideration, and then she accepts. Now, gentlemen, I want you to understand, your name and your character should be far, far more important than your appearance. Ladies, what is more important than your appearance is your standards and your morals and most important, your obedience to God. You must maintain these standards and morals and settle for nothing less. Both people need to remember, uh, a relationship takes time. There needs to be respect, no matter what anyone says. Love is a choice, not a feeling. Remember that. Research it and look it up, and you'll find that it is. Love is simply a choice. But let's take a look at three important factors of a healthy relationship. The first important factor that makes us healthy relationship is excitement. And see, we read that in verses 8 to 10. You know, a Shulamite is very excited to see Solomon. Verse 8, listen, my lover, look, here he comes. She's waiting in anticipation to see her lover. She's listening. There's a huge difference between listening and hearing. See, Norman Wright says, listening is paying attention in order to hear, while hearing is the process of receiving sound. Now, in a healthy relationship, couples need to listen 
rather than just relying on their hearing. Now, she's not only listening, but she is looking. She's longing for her lover to come to her. She's keeping her eye out for him. See, this is where the whole focus is on. It's on him. It's like the, it's like the father in the story of the prodigal son. The father sees him off in a distance and then runs out to meet him. He's longing for his return. It didn't matter. He was so excited to see him. Okay, now let's look at Solomon, verse 8. Leaping across the mountains. See, this man's excited to see his woman. See, that's the, the, this journey, his journey may have been long. It, it could have been strenuous. It could have been tiring. But it's not that very hard because of excitement to see his lover. Guys, let me ask you a question. Are you so excited to see your wife at work or, or go over to see your fiance that your job seems simple, but yet it seems to last for hours because you're so longing to get home to see her? Ladies, are, are you watching and listening, longing to see your husband walk through the door? Are you working just like him and praying for time just to hurry, hurry up so you can be together? See, I'm not just speaking of newlyweds either. Everyone has that honeymoon phase, okay? But also the long-term marriages. Guys, take a look at her perception of him, that he was like a gazelle or a young stag. These animals both suggest speed and virility. In other words, her perception of, uh, of him was he's a hunk, a babe, a knockout. In today's language, I guess that's the way it would be. And the actual looks are never mentioned, and they're irrelevant, as she sees the inner person. So the first factor in a healthy relationship is excitement. The second factor in a healthy relationship is, does your relationship produce life? That's verses 10 through 14. See, Solomon wants to go out on a walk. The winter's past, the rains are over and gone, flowers are here. The season of singing has come. Spring is here. Life is abounding everywhere. Just as springtime is a representation of life, so too should our relationships within our marriage produce life. Now, I'm not speaking about having children, even though that is a part of a marriage if the couple so desires. I'm speaking about life coming to a marriage that was dormant while you're single, both men and women. See, God has designed only certain things to bloom in the context of marriage. When you, when you try to grow these flowers outside of marriage, you only have grown weeds. How many times have you witnessed singles begin to date, and one was spiritual and godly, and the other one wasn't? And as time went by, one drops out of church, they stop doing Bible studies, they stop reading their Bible altogether, some even start to get promiscuous and they don't have any desire to follow the Lord. See, this is a plot created by Satan himself to get people to fall into this trap. Young people, let me give you a bit of wisdom. Older married couples out there watching this, please get younger relatives or friends to watch this message. I've watched for many years one person in a relationship who is on fire for Jesus begin to hang out with someone who is not. And before long, they begin to their, they lose their excitement and enthusiasm for Jesus. In fact, you can sit back and watch their, spiritual, their whole spiritual life get sucked right out of them. Why? Look at the traits of your, close, or your kids' close friends. That's what your kids will become. You've heard it said, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. See, a godly relationship should draw you closer to Jesus, not farther from him. Let me tell you about a lie from the great deceiver himself, which many people believe, especially our young people. They believe, or have the idea, I can change someone. Have you heard someone say it? Have you tried to live it? I've heard it before. People say to me, Pastor, I'm going to marry this person. I know they're mean or unfaithful, or lazy, or unforgiving, or abusive, or a heavy drinker, or a drug user, whatever adjective it may be. Just, you just fill in the blank. But I'm going to change them. No, you're going to be married 
to a mean or unfaithful or lazy or unforgiving or abusive or heavy drinker or drug using person that you cannot change unless they are willing to change themselves. See, I can't count how many marriages have been smashed on the rocks of this life and, the, and if the marriage survives, it's only a shadow of what God intended. You see, you're living in that permissive will instead of the perfect will that God wants you to live in. I'm not saying that all marriages that are not centered around God aren't okay to some degree, but they're not what God wants you to be. So if you could be here, why not step up to here and do what's in his will and do things the right way? All right, let, let, let's look at a picture in a relationship of how a man and a woman develop and go deeper in their relationship. See, verse 14, My dove in the cleft of the rocks, in the hiding places on the mountainside, show me your face, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. See, this woman is an innocent dove up in the cleft of the rocks, giving the idea of being hidden from all who would cause harm. See, in a relationship between a male and a female, there are hidden deep things that you will not share with anyone. But as your relationship deepens, it's like that dove coming out of its cleft, leaving its protection to come out and fly. See, this is what God has intended for marriages, to know the deep things of one another, to help each other to grow as one and ultimately become one. Remember this always. If your spouse is not your best friend, you are out of God's will for your marriage. It takes gentleness, respect, time with Christ at the center to grow a godly marriage. Listen, dear friends, I know people who've been married a long time where the woman is still in the cleft of the cliff and the man's sitting there wondering what to do. And they're both out of God's will. If you've been married for any length of time, You've probably been there yourself. Okay, that brings me to my third point. Recapping right quick now. We have, uh, in a healthy relationship, there needs to be excitement. There needs to be life. And the third important factor in a healthy relationship is there has to be a commitment to solve problems. That's verses 15 through 18. Catch the foxes. See, these little foxes are seldom more than 15 inches tall. And, and, and digging in their holes and passages, they loosen the soil so the, so the vines don't grow in the grape vineyards. See, they would also eat the blossoms, therefore it would never bud and produce the fruit. The fruit would never come to maturity because something would eat it. This business of keeping foxes out of the vineyards is more difficult than it sounds. See, vineyards in, in Palestine were surrounded by stone walls um, topped by a hedge, and the family stayed in the village and in the middle of the villages, in the middle of the vineyards to protect them from the wild animals. This demanded a lot of perseverance. See, if people failed to watch, the foxes would begin their work of destruction. See, it's the same in a relationship. Unresolved conflict will re destroy a relationship. Uh, in Proverbs 18, uh, 18, 19, an, an offended brother is more unyielding than a fortified city. See, this is the same within a relationship. If one is mad, it's extremely hard to get them to listen or change their mind. I, I know you've been there. Or even come to a compromise. See, you must make it a point to never, ever go to bed mad at each other. See, if, if this is the way it always seems, God is not at the center and changes need to occur. See, John Maxwell said, um, if you always do what you've always done, then you will always get what you've always gotten. Let me, give, let me give you an example of that. In marriage, men usually have a problem. Men's problem, after all this time I, I, I can counsel people and, and learn and listen to people, men's problem is anger. Women usually have a problem with stubbornness. Remember, y'all, now this is an example. Not, not all men have anger issues and not all women are stubborn, stubborn but, but for this example, I'm using those, okay? Uh, so if you always do get angry or stubborn, what you've always done, get angry, be stubborn, then you will always get a poor marriage. 
what you've always gotten, a poor marriage. Now hear me, friends. You can pray all day long, fast until you dry up and blow away, cry and beg God until there's no more tears. Nothing is going to happen until you bring those issues to your centerpiece. Who's your centerpiece? Christ is your centerpiece. And if you're willing to have him change you, look at your spouse or, or, or fiance or a Christian brother or sister or, or email me and say, I need God to change me. Let them pray with you. I'll pray for you. Let God work in your life. Sir Josiah Stamp said, It is easy to dodge our responsibilities but we cannot dodge the consequences of our responsibilities. As couples, we are responsible for each other and our walk with Christ. Uh, uh, another example, Paul Meyer said, 90% of all those who fail are not actually defeated, they just simply quit. But you know what? As I always say in my messages, all hope is not lost. God is a God of second chances. Maybe you're sitting there feeling, you know, Rick, I've allowed those little miserable foxes to destroy my vineyard that God has given me. The Bible tells us that God can restore what the locusts have eaten. Jesus saves the best for last, people. Don't we know this? Don't quit. Try a different approach and ask God to change you. God's in the business of restoration. If you're successful at catching or keeping the little foxes out of your vineyard, here is what takes place. Verse 16 and 17. My beloved is mine. I trust him. I belong to him. Safety and security. An environment to grow. What grows? Trust, admiration, passion, friends. Are you sitting there thinking, I, I wish I could have that? I want to say, you can. I can do all things through Christ Jesus, who strengthens me. You can do it, friends. Work on that relationship. Therefore, in closing, three things to a healthy relationship. Excitement, life, commitment to solve problems. How's your relationship with God? Is he the center of your life? Is he the center of your relationship? For unmarried couples, are you avoiding the sexual sins? Are you excited to come to his house? Are you excited to read and study his word? Are you even excited to watch this video message or any video message? Is there life in your relationship with him? Are you seeing fruit? Are you able to solve problems with him? Are you breaking down strongholds in your life? These will show you. Do you need to strengthen your relationship with Christ so you can increase the strength in your relationship with your spouse or your fiancé or even your boyfriend or girlfriend, dating couples? If there is so little trust, you have to snoop around your partner's phone or computer or social media sites. There is no relationship, at least not a God-centered one, and it will not work. This is a main reason why before I marry a couple, I require couple counseling sessions with me. Just, just a couple. If God is the sinner, he will bless your marriage. So don't settle for second best if you can have the very best. Parents, watch the company your children keep. Keep them focused so as they reach a point for a relationship, it'll always be God's sinner. Keep an eye on your grandchildren. Kind of give a little wisdom to your own children about them if you have to. Keep them God-centered. If you're watching and you're unsaved and having problems within your marriage or you have trust issues with your partner, simply come to Jesus right now where you are, accepting and recognizing Him as your Lord and Savior, and simply believing in your heart He died on the cross for you. And in faith, believe, he will immediately welcome you as a child of his and will immediately forgive you and never, ever remember all your sins.
take this step of faith right now. And then also, you can put Jesus in the center of your life and your relationship. Trust me, you won't regret it. Please, please, feel free to email me anytime about anything or any question, and I promise I will get back with you. I know that sometimes it takes me a little while as I have a lot of emails and a lot of young people asking questions about how they exactly do accept Jesus. What does it mean? I, I, I take those as a priority that I must answer. But I promise you, I promise you, I will get back to you personally with any question, any concern, anything. If you uh, look down at the, at the bottom of this video message, you can see the email at the bottom of the screen. I really look forward to hearing from you. Bless each of you. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time you have allowed me to share this message with so many. I pray, God, that it touches each one's heart and each person, married for years, newly married, fixing to get married, I pray that through this message, through you, that they can put you at the center of their relationship. I pray, Father, that if anyone is unsaved and listening, that as they come to you, you immediately allow the Holy Spirit to enter them and change them and make them a new person in you. For these things and all things, I ask humbly in your precious name.